got to understand that you are not a mistake in life. You've gone through some things, some tragic things, some troubled things, some bad relationships. You've made some bad decisions. And everybody in here has made the bad decisions. Some of y'all made them while you were speaking in tongues. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Don't you sit there like you ain't never made no bad decisions. But if God could not allow us or couldn't strengthen us or give us what we need to recover, we could never rise. Can I tell you something? You need a new target in your life. You're always going to have people who are not going to believe you can do it. You hear what I'm telling you? You're always going to have people who are not going to believe you can do it. When David ran to meet Goliath, his older brother was out there. He told the servants of Saul, he's just showing out. Don't pay him no attention. The Bible said he talked to David himself, tried to convince David not to go out there. You finna get out there and you gonna, you gonna go out there David, get your behind, but you better stay right here. You can, don't you do that, man. That's, that man been fighting all his life. David had to ignore what his brother was telling him. Because he was someplace in God that allowed him to see his target and not be afraid of what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, when we can get to the place where we are not afraid of what's going to happen. When we can get to the place where the target is in front of us and the obstacle is not bigger than the target. Hallelujah. Stop letting your pains eclipse your accomplishments. Stop letting your troubles highlight your failures and make you feel that you cannot reach for something new in God. Can I share something with you? The saints of God, we ought to be the most powerful, the most wealthiest people in the world. We got issues. You know, when you're not saved, sin is sin. When you're saved, they say you got struggles. Sin ain't sin when you're saved. You say, pray for me, I got a struggle in my life. We love to, we love to go find Paul right there and say, you know, he had a thorn in his flesh. There's a difference between a thorn and a branch. You ain't got a thorn, you dealing with a branch. You ain't got a thorn. So God comes to empower you. You need a new target in your life. Do you hear me? You need a new target in your life. You need, you need something fresh to reach for. And as you get before God, as you seek him, you can't do this half-heartedly seeking God. As you do this, going after God with everything that is within you, the target is going to get closer. Come on, come on. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I know some of you are past 60 years old. You stop talking about, I'm too old to do anything else in my life. Stop that. I figured something out. One day I woke up in the morning and my knee was hurting. I hadn't fallen, I hadn't slipped, nothing happened to me. I just woke up and I'm like, what? I'm like, how this happened here? I didn't jump off nothing, I didn't, I just woke up and had a pain I had not had a pain before. Some of y'all should have said amen, you know what I'm talking about.
That ain't no reason for it to hurt that bad, I don't think. I just start telling the devil, you a liar, you a liar, you a liar, devil, you a liar. You, you got to begin to speak those things that be not as though they were, and when you speak it, believe it. Do you hear me? Stop allowing the enemy to make you feel that the things you desire to achieve is out of your reach. Jesus sends the 70 out. Sends them out to share his love, to lift up his name. He sends them out to be a witness of who he is. Woo, didn't think we were going to make it back here. The devil chased us so bad. Woo! We barely made it back. Uh -uh. If you don't know, let me tell you right now, somewhere in your life the devil's going to show up. And when he show up, don't run. Activate the power that God put in your life. When he show up, don't pull out the retreat. Like, hey, stand in the strength that God has given you. I'm just about finished. You cannot measure yourself next to somebody else. Some people never overcome their wounds. Because you're constantly reminding yourself of who you're not. Hallelujah. When you come to know that God comes to give you what you need to overcome every obstacle in your way. I told y'all before when I was living with my mama boy tore my clothes up I came home twice. My mama told me she said you come through this door one more day. <laughs> Your clothes tore up like that. Looking at me crying. And you ain't had a whooping like the one you just about three minutes. It's gonna be done no good. But if I get home, ain't no telling how long she gonna all of a sudden fear changed. Can I tell you why it changed? Because I had nowhere to go. Sometimes God will allow you to get into a position where you have nowhere else to turn. Sometimes he'll let you get in a position where there ain't nowhere else to turn. It's either fight or lose. And all of a sudden, God will give you that strength. The devil, uh -uh, it's not working like this. You begin to declare life over yourself. You cannot, listen to me, you cannot Allow your emotions to hold you hostage over something you cannot change. You cannot change if you broke up with your baby's father or your baby's mom. Broke up for three or four years now and not paying child support. And you mad enough to fight every month. And one of the reasons why you're so angry is because it consistently opens up a wound that you've been trying to let heal. I come to tell you that the God that we serve is so powerful that he can bless you to the degree where you say, you know what, I don't even need the child. God can do so much in your life when you come to understand that he don't want to put you in a position where your life is repetitive with wounds and failures. He's got more for you. He's got more for you. God's got more for you. The problem is you need a new target. Sometimes we become so dependent on our little space until God got to do something to get us out of it. To expand your mind. There is something to be said about exposure. That when you're exposed to certain things, it changes, it shifts your frame of reference. You never ate fried chicken, you don't know what fried chicken tastes like. You eat fried chicken and then you have an understanding of what it tastes like. But God wants to expose you to greater. Because when God exposes you to greater, you'll come to understand that he has greater for you. square feet, beautiful, five acres of land. So I 
I was talking to another friend of mine in Oakland, California. We were talking about a house, how beautiful his house was. Then we brought up another name, and this person's house is 10,000 square feet. Wow. I've been to both of the houses. It's not the same house. Oh, yeah. And so then we started talking about another friend whose house is 18,000 square feet. And I went to his house. I said, my Lord, you're exposing me to a lot of good things around here. I was, I was, I was standing on Ashland at the time. I was like, this room 12 by 12 ain't going to work for me. You trying to help me, Lord. I think I stuck in a room 12 by 12. You try to show me that you can bless me and you can open doors for me if I remove the limits and I allow my faith to operate in you and I don't let the devil intimidate my life because you come to give me power over the enemy. When the 70 returned to Jesus, Jesus still did not work. Look at somebody tell them God's power works. It worked when you got problems. It worked when stuff is well. It worked when stuff is wrong. God's power works. God's power works, and you must learn how to activate that thing in your life. Finally, as I share with this young man who was troubled, I said to him, you're going to have to forgive your mother. He looked at me, he said, Reverend, that's a hard one right there. Because the problem had lived with this pain so long until hating her was the tool of relief. And now I'm asking him to let go of your tool of relief because God's got better for you. I don't know what obstacle the enemy has used against you, but it's time to let it go because God's got greater for you. Some of you have come through abusive relationships things that have happened that have he has destined things for you you got to get a new target in your life you got to begin to speak those things that causes you to realize that he comes to make you whole devil I'm not going to fail and if I fail failure is an opportunity for improvement I'm going to rise to be what God wants me to be I'm not going to let you back me in a corner. A lot of times I've had people say all kind of crazy stuff. I had people tell me to my face I would never pass this church. <laughs> Your daddy ain't going to do this. You ain't going to do this. Lord Jesus, I'm telling the truth. I just want to see you prosper, grow, and you like, I'm, I got other things to do in life. And I know that if I keep reaching for the target, you'll see me rise. How that you might not like it, but you'll see it happen. You might not want to see it happen, but you'll see it happen. You, you gotta understand that every person in this sanctuary has some type of imperfection. Every person in here has gone through some able to lift you and strengthen you and keep you going when you don't feel you can go yourself. The fact that you are sitting there is proof that God works. You must not allow stuff that the devil threw at you. Don't get comfortable with it because God's got more for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you got to get a target in Jesus speaks this to these 70. That when people point at all of your failures with no expectation of your success, I'm going to give you power that makes them turn around and say, my God, what happened? 
Hallelujah. I'm going to give you power to tread upon the serpent and over the scorpion and over all of the powers of the enemy. I'm going to give you power. I'm not going to leave you in failure. I'm not going to have some confidence. You ain't going to look like everybody. You ain't going to be shaped like everybody. Don't, don't try to, listen, stop trying to redo yourself. I'm telling you. Man, you, you shouldn't have to go fix nothing to go for somebody to like you. Botox on out of my face. I ain't changing. If you can't take me the way I come, you don't like big noses and bald heads, I can't be your friend. Because it is what it is. Y'all don't want to hear me today. You ain't got to try to fix nothing, all that stuff. I don't know why you're going through all the changes. All that stuff going to the doctor. Now, ain't no guarantee that when he finished cutting, it's going to come out right here. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Ain't no guarantee now. Come out, your head crooked or something, and you got to go back again. Uh-uh. No, no, I'm leaving all of it like this. I know I need to die a little bit, lose a little weight, but I ain't going through all that. I'm just telling you now. Ain't nobody got to fix you, change you. You are who you are. Ain't no need to go into the store looking at a size eight and a half and you know you wear a 12. Force your foot in that shoe. And after three hours, you tiptoe. They think you walking slow for fashion. And you ain't walking slow for no fashion. That corn on your baby toe is about to kill you. You better put that size 12 on. Walk on out the door. Hallelujah. You don't like it with big feet. You can't hang out with me tonight, baby. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Dark skin, trying to get light skin, light skin, trying to get dark skin. I don't even know why you all on the internet in the petite section. You know you can't fit that dress. They lure you in. You don't even know that the model, she ain't nothing but 17 years old. She looking flawless like she floating through the room with that dress. She didn't stop letting you stop, stop, stop letting me. In my lifetime, I've been in a room where people would say negative things. People say all kind of crazy stuff. 